Porsche's motorsport credentials speak for themselves. Their dominance in endurance racing means that to this day, they are the most decorated manufacturer in the discipline, with a staggering 19 Le Mans wins since their first in 1970 with the 917. Today, we're talking about two of the cars that set in stone Porsche's ambition and crucially their ability to dominate the World Sports Car Championship throughout the 1980s, and even grab a win in the 90s. This is the story of Le Mans' most successful dynasty, the Porsche 956 and 962. Created to compete in the new Group C class at Le Mans and in the World Sports Car Championship, the Porsche team went all in on development of the 1982 956. The engine was carried over from the previous generation Porsche 936 Group 6 car. The 2.65 litre flat six turbocharged engine, originally developed for IndyCar, hence the unusual displacement, produced 635 brake horsepower which may sound low compared to the top flight race cars of today. However, thanks to an aluminium monocoque chassis, the 956 weighed just 800 kilograms, about the same as today's Formula One cars. The biggest difference, however, between the 956 and its predecessors was the aerodynamic characteristics of the car. It was designed to take advantage of the ground effect, which in practical terms meant the 956 generated approximately three times more downforce than the Porsche 917 that had won Le Mans only a decade previously. The hard work paid off, as despite missing the second round at the Nürburgring in 1982, the Porsche 956 would take championship victory, the first for the Group C class, a victory made even sweeter by an absolutely dominant performance at Le Mans, in which Porsche 956s finished first, second and third setting the bar extremely high for any would-be competitor. The following year, lightning struck yet again for the Porsche team, as they claimed yet another championship victory and yet another Le Mans win with the 956, a car which by now had come to define Group C sports car racing. Despite their obvious and commanding technological lead over their competitors, Porsche weren't keen to become complacent and risk letting slip what was shaping up to potentially be an era of dominance. To this end, they developed the 956B for 1984, an updated form of the 956 boasting improvements such as an increased engine displacement, now 2.8 litres, as well as suspension and aerodynamic changes to eke out as much performance as physically possible. To help ensure victory at as many circuits as possible, though Porsche were not the only manufacturer to do this, Porsche created two different rear wings and front winglet sets. To give teams the option to either run a high downforce setup for circuits like Spa, or a low downforce setup for circuits like Sarth. The low downforce setup meant that the cars were able to hit 225 miles per hour down the Mulsanne Strait. This was, of course, the era before the chicanes. The changes made were clearly beneficial, as 1984 saw Porsche win the World Endurance Championship for the third time, though the Le Mans victory fell to Yost Racing and their 956B, who beat the Rothmans Porsche team that had won previously, the Rothmans team still came out on top overall in the championship. If you're enjoying the video so far, please tap the like button. It makes a big difference. Thank you. Porsche were dominating the WEC but the plan had originally been to also run in the IMSA GTP Championship. Unfortunately, the 956 didn't meet the regulations and was banned on safety grounds, due to the driver's feet being in front of the front axle centerline. By 1985, Porsche was bored with simply dominating the WEC, and desires to race in IMSA were reignited. Step one, of course, was to modify the 956 to make it eligible to compete. So, they extended the chassis a touch, moved the pedal box behind the front axle, and upped the displacement to 3 litres. It turns out the IMSA regulators were maybe onto something with the 956's safety, as 1985 saw the tragic death of Stefan Beloff at Spa after a collision with a new 962 being driven by Jackie X. The 962 wasn't just built for IMSA GTP, it also became the replacement for the 956 from 1985, with many teams choosing to upgrade to the more powerful and safer car, with more still following suit after the death of Berloff. That being said, 
Yost Racing won Le Mans again with their trusty 956B, while the WEC went the way of the Rothmans team yet again, who started the season with a 956 before switching to the 962C to take them home. 1985 also saw the new 962 compete in IMSA, where, perhaps unsurprisingly, it won the championship in its debut season. The 962C proved a worthy successor to the formidable 956, with the Rothmans team winning Le Mans and Brun Motorsport running a 962C winning the WSC, making it the fifth year in a row that a Porsche had done so. To even further cement into the minds of literally everybody that Porsche was the best at building race cars, the 962 won the IMSA GTP series again too. Porsche's total domination of the two largest sports car racing series in the world cannot be overstated. They seemed to be unbeatable. Right up until they weren't. 1987 saw trouble for Porsche. It had been privateer teams winning with the 962 as of late, with Porsche scaling back its Group C and IMSA GTP development programs, and it started to show. Despite the Rothmans Porsche team scooping up yet another Le Mans win in 1987, the WSC belonged to someone else for the first time in over five years. Jaguar and their XJR8 had dethroned the 962 by convincingly winning the championship. Across the Atlantic, the 962 scored another IMSA GTP championship in 1987. However, it would be the last. The following year, the monstrous Jaguar XJR9 would break Porsche's Le Mans winning streak too, and with Porsche unwilling to keep up the fight, the 962 slowly fell behind throughout the remaining years of Group C's running. However, three IMSA championships, five FIA championships, and six Le Mans wins proved more than enough to establish Porsche as the most successful manufacturer of the Group C era and helped bolster its record as one of the most successful racing car manufacturers ever. And it didn't stop there. The 962 was revived in a controversial reading of the GT1 rules after the end of Group C. In 1994, Dauer Racing, a German racing team, saw the success of the Porsche 962 in the Group C era and thought it would surely still be competitive, right? The only question was how to get it on the track. After the end of Group C as the de facto top class in 1993, top flight sports car racing pivoted to the GT1 rules. 1994 was the final year Group C cars were allowed to compete, however they were heavily restricted. The GT1 regulations stipulated that competitors must be based on road legal production cars. This was an attempt to ground the cars in reality and prevent the ridiculousness and massive costs that had been seen at the end of Group C. But the 962 was a Group C car. How on earth would it ever be allowed to race in a road homologated class? Porsche never built any road versions. Well, that's where Dower comes in. Dower Racing purchased old 962s and promptly set about tearing them apart. They modified some of the body panels, bolted in a second seat, added in a small luggage compartment and added height adjustable hydraulic suspension to meet German ride height regulations. Then they presumably sold a few, I know the Sultan of Brunei bought one for example, and they called it a day. That's a homologated road car. Unsurprisingly, this whole fiasco was very controversial. However, under the rules as they stood in 1994, it was technically allowed, and so it raced. Perhaps the Dower 962 would have been an obscure footnote had it been the end of the story. However, that year, the car won Le Mans, the most prestigious racing event in the world. This caused great upset amongst many who questioned how it was ever allowed to race in the first place. Others praised the ingenuity of the team behind it. The ACO moved quickly to close the loophole in the rules that had allowed the Dower 962 to compete by setting a minimum requirement for the number of road cars that must be built. However, the Dower 962 went down in the history books as the first LMGD1 car to win at Le Mans and it kicked off an era at Le Mans arguably just as mad as the Group C era that came before it. In fact, it wouldn't even be the last time a Group C car was brought back from the grave. Check out the story of the TWR Porsche WSC 95 on screen now. Thanks for watching, and until next time, goodbye.